Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this session, we'll be covering coordinate transformations and in particular, translation of coordinate systems. This concept will prove crucial when we get to look at special relativity. In this video, I will be solving three exercises of increasing complexity step by step. The timestamps can be found in the comment section down below. To get an idea of what coordinate transformations are, and as an introduction to the first exercise, consider the following scenario. Let's say you are in a foreign city with a friend, and at some point you lose track of each other. You call her on her phone to figure out where she is. You decide to use a characteristically tall building that is visible from anywhere in the city. So you're sure that you're both looking at the same building in the distance. You tell your friend you see the building to your east, but your friend says she locates it to the west of her. If you now manage to accurately describe the position of the building from both vantage points and compare these results, you will be able to locate one another. Coordinate transformations are basically the mathematical way of comparing different frames of reference. Let's apply the mathematics on this scenario and start the first exercise. The first step is to draw a coordinate system attached to each of our two observers. This means an x and y axis with the origin at the location of our observer. Let's take a blue coordinate system for this observer and a green coordinate system for our other observer. So for the green observer, we have an axis x prime and y prime, again with the origin at the exact location of that observer. Having drawn the coordinate systems for both the blue and the green observer, we can determine the components of our building in the distance, in this case, this red dot, for both our observers. So for the blue observer, we see that the y component is one and the x component is two. Likewise, for the green observer, we again see that the y prime component is one and that the x component is equal to minus one. Now we know that for the blue observer, we see that the coordinates x and y of our building in the distance, the red point here, are given by two, one. Likewise, for the green observer, our x prime and our y prime components are given by minus one and one. And again, these are simply the coordinates of each of our two observers of the building in the distance, the red point in this case. At this point, we have two descriptions of the same point, but only looked at from a different coordinate system. And comparing the two, we can determine the transformation that allows us to switch between the two systems. We find that x prime is equal to x minus 3, because we see that from 2 to minus 1, we just subtract 3. And in a similar fashion, we see that y prime is simply equal to y. We don't have to add or subtract anything, because both are just 1. And this is actually already the coordinate transformation that we need because we see that if we are given the x and y components in the blue coordinate system we can directly find the x prime and y prime coordinates in the green coordinate system using this transformation that we found by comparing the components of the same point but looked at from different coordinate systems we now use to try and find the origin of the green coordinate system as seen from the blue coordinate system. In our scenario, this corresponds to finding the location of our friend with the green coordinate system in our own coordinate system. So in a sense, we need to find x0 and y0. And I call these x0 and y0 because they are the coordinates in the blue coordinate system of the origin of the green coordinate system. That's why I subscript them with a zero. To find these blue coordinates, we cannot simply use this transformation directly, because in this transformation, we get the green coordinates if the blue coordinates are given. However, now we need to get the blue coordinates when we are given the green coordinates, because we know that the green coordinates, x prime is zero and y prime is zero, because in the green coordinates, its own origin is simply zero, zero. So what we need to do is to inverse this transformation to get the blue coordinates 
on the left hand side of the equality sign and the green corners on the right hand side of the equality sign. For y this doesn't change much, but for x we see that this minus 3 will get transported to the other side of the equality sign and thus become a plus 3. So we get that x is equal to x prime plus 3. And this is the coordinate system that we will use to find the origin of the green coordinate system as seen from the blue coordinate system. If we now simply fill in our green coordinates being 0, 0, we see that we simply get 3 and 0. So we have found the location of our friend because we know that the origin of the green coordinates as seen from the blue coordinates is simply 3, 0. And using this exercise, what we've learned is that we can now write down the general coordinate transformation of a translation. This simply becomes that the prime components of any point are equal to the blue components minus the x and y component from the origin of the green coordinate system as seen from the blue coordinate system. And this is our general formula for the translation of coordinates. The general form of this translation coordinate transformation shows us exactly what we did in this exercise. We were given the coordinates of the same point, this tall building, but in different coordinates, and we determined the origin of the green coordinate system as viewed from the blue coordinate system. An alternative use of this coordinate transformation is to determine the coordinates of a point as viewed from another coordinate system if we are given the coordinates of this point in our own coordinate system and the coordinates of the origin of the other coordinate system as given in our coordinate system. Now this might still be quite abstract. This is why in the following exercise we will make it more concrete by giving it a graphical interpretation. In this exercise we start out with a blue coordinate system we can call it our own coordinate system. So we have an X and a Y axis. And let's say we are observing a point which has the coordinates three and three. So in the blue coordinate system, in our own coordinate system, the components are simply three and three. Let's now consider another coordinate system, which is shifted in both the X and the Y direction. Whereas in the previous exercise, it was only shifted in the x direction. So we have x prime and y prime. And what we now try to figure out in this exercise is to find the coordinates of the same point that we are looking at, but in the x prime and y prime coordinate system. So in the green coordinate system. So we want to get from this notation to the x prime and y prime coordinates of this point. To do this, we need one more piece of information, namely the coordinates of the origin of the coordinate system that we are trying to transform to, in this case the green coordinate system. So we need the components of the origin of the green coordinate system. In this case we find that it has an x component 1 and a y component 1.5. So we know that x0 and y0 is equal to 1 and 1.5. Since we now have these two pieces of information, we can directly determine the coordinates of this point as seen from the green coordinate system. So we find that x prime is equal to the x component of our point in the blue coordinate system, which is 3, minus the x component of the origin of our green coordinate system as seen from the blue coordinate system, which is in this case 1. We know that y prime is equal to the y component of the point that we're looking at in our own blue coordinate system, in this case it's also 3, minus the y component of the origin of the green coordinate system as seen from our own perspective, and this is 1.5. So we find that the x component in the green coordinate system of our red point is equal to 2 and the y component of this point in the green coordinate system is equal to 1.5. So we know that this point will be 2 and this point will be 1.5.
and we found the coordinates of the point that we were looking at in terms of the green coordinate system. And it's in this sense that we translated the information that we had, so we measured the coordinates of this point as 3, 3. We translated it to another coordinate system of which we knew the origin of. Now points are of course not the only thing we can transform between two coordinate systems. In theory we could transform anything between coordinate systems. Let's consider the case of transforming a straight line in the next exercise. Consider the following scenario. You've predicted that at one specific moment during the night a satellite will cross the night sky. And you've even calculated it that you know exactly the path that it will follow. In your own coordinate system, the path the satellite will follow will be a very straight line. And you call this straight line C. Now, in your own coordinate system, you calculated that the path that the satellite will follow will be y is equal to x plus 1, which is of course a simple linear function. Let's now consider the case where you have a friend that shares your passion of astronomy, but lives on the other side of the country. And as a consequence, the trajectory of the satellite that you've calculated will also not be valid for his coordinate system. So what you want to do is you want to communicate the trajectory of the satellite as seen from your coordinate system to the trajectory that the satellite would have in the coordinate system of your friend. So you want to transform this formula for the trajectory from the blue to the green coordinate system. As always, the first step to do is to determine the coordinates of the origin of the coordinate system that you want to transform your trajectory to. In this case, it will be 1 on the x-axis and 1 half on the y-axis. So we have that x0 is equal to 1 and y0 is equal to 1 half. And this is already a large part of the work, because in the second step, we can simply use the coordinate transformation. We have x prime is equal to x minus the x component of the origin of the green coordinate system as seen in our own coordinate system. And in this case, that would be 1. Likewise, y prime is equal to y minus 1 half. What we ultimately want to find is the trajectory of the satellite as seen from the green coordinate system. So we want to have something along the lines of y prime is equal to something x prime plus something because this is the function of a linear graph as seen from the green coordinate system and what we have already is the same trajectory but now as a function of x and y so we see that we actually want to transform x and y to x prime and y prime so in a sense we need to reverse this transformation because in this transformation we get x prime and y prime from x and y and we want to have it the other way around but this is not difficult at all because we just move these two constant terms to the other side of the equality sign so we get that x is equal to x prime plus one and we have that y is equal to y prime plus one half and these transformations we can now directly use because we have the expression in x and y of the trajectory of our satellite. This is the one that we calculated. It's y is equal to x plus 1. And now we can directly replace this y and x using these coordinate transformations. So we get that y is equal to y prime plus 1 half, then the equality sign stays, and x is equal to x prime plus 1. We can now rewrite this equality and isolate y prime on the left hand side. So we get that y prime is equal to x prime plus 1 minus 1 half, which is of course equal to x prime plus 1 half. And there we have already our solution. Because we found the expression for our linear curve, which represents the trajectory of our satellite as seen from the green coordinate system. So y prime is x prime plus one half. In this way, we translated this curve, a real thing, so the trajectory of a satellite across the night sky, from one coordinate system, the blue one, 
to another coordinate system, the green one. And this is the power of coordinate transformations, and in this case, translational coordinate transformations. It gives us the ability to communicate our findings and measurements between different coordinate systems. So if these measurements come from physical objects in the real world, then we know that we can always translate our findings to other people for whom these objects might seem to be in very different locations. And this brings us to the end of this video. And I hope that you are now more familiar with how to use the coordinate transformations and in particular translations. In the next video, we'll be looking at the rotational coordinate transformations. So stay tuned for that one. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to get notified by future releases, consider subscribing. And with that, I thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.